Hello to everyone. I'm glad that you all could join me at this time. My name is Shavi Zain, and this discussion that I'm going to have with you all is specifically catered to a specific group of people. The subject matter is in regards to those emotions that you are feeling that have you feeling off balance. You might be feeling emotions of sadness. You might be feeling maybe some bitterness. You might be feeling pain. You know, um, whatever that emotion is that has you feeling off balance, but you can't quite get to the root of where it's coming from. That's where I'm here to bring some guidance and some enlightenment on that. Now, I'd have to put this disclaimer out there because I do find that sometimes in my comments, there are people who will make, uh, you know, make comments in regards to, well, this is not my message. You know, it's not for me. Well, if it's not for you, then that's fine. The best thing that you can do is to just come back for a message that is more catered to where you are currently. If you're not in this energy where you're feeling down or where you're feeling off balance, then I'm happy about that. I'm glad to hear that. But this message is specifically catered to those who are in that energy. And so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be pulling some cards to see exactly or to at least get an idea. Use your own intuition as well. Take this how it resonates in terms of your own circumstance because not every card that comes out will be specifically catered to you. If you want a reading that is specifically catered to your circumstance, then you can always email me. I charge a flat rate for my readings, and you can email me, and we can set up a one-to-one -one session, okay? But this is a general reading for those who are drawn to this message, and based on the title, you will know if this is something that you might want to, uh, you know, listen to, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. So for those of you who are feeling off balance right now, okay? Where are these emotions coming from? What is the root of this right now? So what's coming out here is we are the world, okay? Now this particular card is, is the symbolic of the world card, which shows that there are some completions of cycles that's happening in your life, okay? Um, this could be major shifts that are happening in your life, whether it's emotionally, spiritually, or physically, or maybe even all of them. You find yourself closing out old chapters and getting prepared to start this new season. And sometimes that transition from one season to the next can be, it could be challenging, especially if you had to leave behind certain people, places, or things in order to close out that cycle, okay? So sometimes you have to make greater sacrifices in order to move into the next phase of your growth process. So let's see, what else is going on here? Well, you have angelic guidance that's around you, okay? So you are being divinely guided. So this could, this could be, for some of you, maybe you feel that, maybe you're questioning if you're making the right decisions. Maybe you're questioning whether or not you are actually being divinely guided by your uh, spiritual team or if somehow you are fooling yourself into believing that the decisions that you are making or the cuts that you've had to make in your life, whether or not they were the right thing to do. But I'm seeing here, yes, you've been, you're being guided by your spiritual team to move into an entirely new cycle of your life, okay? They're, they're taking you into a new direction here. Um, if you can see that, yeah. So they're taking you into this new direction to actually join hands with like-minded people who have, um, who have a divine calling, who have a purpose to bring balance and to restore balance within the world, humanity, and the universe. And so... I do, yeah, okay, here it is. So letting go. This is what's happening here. You've been called to let go, okay? Old belief systems, people, places, things, habits, whatever the case may be, you've been called to let go. And so this, when you look at this picture, you have this drop up here, this getting ready to fall into this body of water. And so some of you may be highly emotional right now just based on seeing this picture. Some of you might be actually shedding tears in regards to this um, this new uh, path that you're being called to take, okay, or the, the, the cycles that have had to close out in your life, having to let go. Some of you might be shedding tears about this. And then for others of you, it's just that energy of, you know, falling and, you know, this drop was... 
it's going from being a drop to actually transforming into a something greater than itself. And that's where this, this card also comes in too. You know, you go from being that individual person that's doing the work on yourself to heal, doing what's necessary to close out old cycles, and then you become something, you become part of something that's greater than yourself, okay? This is not just about humanity and other people, but it's also about balancing out nature, balancing out Mother Earth, and also balancing out the universe, the energy of the universe, okay? And so every one of these people here are shining a light. All of them are enlightened and they're actually, you know, the energy that they are uh, emanating is of light. And so it takes a lot of healing to become that version of yourself. It takes releasing all things that are dark, all things that are toxic, all things that have weighed you down. First, you got to go through that process first. And so a large part of that process is letting go of people, places, and things. And so this, this can be, you know, it's not as, for some it can be harder than, than others, okay? But this is all leading you towards your own personal growth. You have flowering here. This is leading you towards your own personal growth and balancing out that masculine and feminine energy, that masculine and feminine energy that exists within you, that yin and that yang energy, okay? And creating those healthy boundaries for yourself to protect the, um, the growth that you have actually been able to, um, that you've been able to obtain through your healing. Okay. So this is why you're, this is why you might be feeling a little bit emotional. Okay. Now the politics card came out in the reverse. I feel like, you know, you might be unmasking people or you might even be in that energy of taking the mask off of yourself and no longer being willing to be inauthentic to who you truly are. And maybe that's something difficult because you might be literally, you might have already gone through the process of letting go of people or certain habits or certain things. Now you're in the process of letting go of that old version of who you used to be. And so this is all about shedding that skin. You know, with the snake being here, that's all about releasing and shedding that skin, taking off that false mask. And with this coming out in the rever uh, reverse, it's like you're no longer... Um, able to play politics with people anymore. You have to express who you have grown to become because there's no going back to who you used to be, okay? And so I'm hearing that for some of you, you might even have people around you who are trying to come back into your energy, but you know that based on the lack of growth that they've been able to have or based on the lack of change that they have been willing to allow themselves to, uh, to go through, you have to release these people in order to be uh, to continue down your divine path because your calling is something greater where you cannot allow your energy to be um, to be imposed by people who decide to stay in toxicity. And so it can be an emotional thing for you, especially if you have people around you who are using your emotions against you at this time. You know, it can be a highly sensitive time. Uh, right now as you go through these massive changes because sometimes you have to grieve releasing the old version of yourself. Some people celebrate releasing the old version of themselves and other people they grieve releasing the old version of themselves because they know that with that you leave behind certain people, places, and things, okay? So I feel like for some of you, you know, yeah, this is you coming into uh, unison with yourself and all that exists around you. And so that energy of transparency can be, it can be kind of difficult because she's, she's here, she's naked, okay? She's naked sitting on this plant, but also uh, connected to the universe, okay? Connected to all that exists around her. So this is that energy of as, as, as above, so below. And then here you are. In between the two, just just being and allowing yourself to connect and to be one, to become one with all that exists. And so to get naked, to strip down, it takes a level of transparency. And that that goes right along with what I had seen here in terms of shedding the skin. When I mentioned shedding the skin and releasing the older version of who you used to be. And so... Um, when you strip down and when you get naked spiritually, you 
have to take a good look at those things that you might have tried to ignore by covering them up with different layers, okay? And so sometimes it can be overwhelming to have to face these um, aspects of yourself and knowing that it's time to release them and let them go and that you can no longer operate in life from that energy. You have to actually move and 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 deal with things from a different from a different perspective, okay? Um, in order to stay balanced, in order to stay in alignment, and in order to continue to emanate that beautiful light that is being um, birthed from within you. So I do sense that this is a it's, a it's a trying time in terms of letting go, okay? But there's growth that's happening in spite of that, okay? And you might be just going through growing pains, you know, when, when there's growth, there's always changes that's happening. And sometimes it can be chaotic change. This can be internally or externally. But that change is necessary in order for the growth to happen, okay? Without change, without change, growth is not possible, okay? Because the whole idea of growth is change. And so this is actually allowing you to reap the harvest of those seeds that you have planted, though. Those seeds that you planted towards your healing, those seeds that you planted towards doing things from a space of love and integrity when it came to other people, those seeds that you planted when you was just out giving a word of advice or doing a kind gesture for someone or, you know, speaking a kind word for someone, praying for someone, whatever it is that you have been doing that's been allowing you to grow into this beautiful being that you have become, it, it didn't come easy. And so as a result of that, though, you receive a harvest, you know, there is something that is stored up for you that is growing, okay? And some of you might be growing impatient with the process of this. But this is where you come back into unison with why you're here. This is not about the material gain that you get for the efforts that you've made. This is not about the spice that you're the spouse that you're able to obtain for the, the love that you have exemplified within yourself. This is not about the spiritual gifts that you've been able to um, unlock because of the work that you've been doing for yourself. This is literally about becoming the best version of you. All of those things are important, but the best version of you actually comes into unison with someone else who become the best version of themselves. I don't care if they're all the way on the other side of the globe. And then someone else on the other side has become the best version of themselves. And everybody comes together to shift the energy of the universe through love. And so all of those things that you accumulate along the way as a result of the seeds that you have planted, they are a bonus. But keep in mind that anything that you're able to obtain in the physical, anything that you obtain that is that can that can disintegrate is on the surface of it's on the surface in terms of the the beauty of what you have done for for yourself spiritually, okay? That's, that's only on the surface. That's only bonuses, okay? And so the ultimate goal should not necessarily be obtaining a spouse or obtaining financial abundance or awakening your spiritual gifts. The ultimate goal should be just being the most authentic version of yourself and becoming one with all things, okay? And being unapologetically you. And this is what actually allows uh, for evolution, for, you know, not only for your soul and your spirit to evolve in this lifetime as well as the next lifetime and the next one after that, um, but also you end up impacting all of those who benefit from your light, okay? So everyone comes together with that healed energy and that, that energy of love and freedom and just being who they naturally are called to be, and it shifts the energy of the universe. That's what it's all about balancing this thing back out so you balance yourself within and then you are able to have an impact on balancing those things that are outside of you so as within so without and so try not to put too much focus on how long it's taking for you to reap the harvest of the seeds that you have planted because then you get off track of the reason why you was called to do this in the first place okay and so for some of you 
you might be feeling down because you you know that you're having to release other you know certain people in order to grab hold of you know someone new or something new and that this is what's actually going to allow you to be in full participation with your with the with the new season that's coming that you're moving into okay because resisting letting go of the past is actually going to cause a postponement it's going to cause stagnation in your forward movement and it will also call to you more karmic lessons until you actually understand the importance of releasing people, places, or things that can't go with you in this next season of your life. And so I just, I feel like some of you might be grieving. If you didn't understand why you was feeling this way, it's like, okay, well, nothing is really happening on the surface of my life. I've already released certain people, places, and things. And so that's been already in, in motion for a, a minute now. Um, I've been in hermit mode. I've been doing the work on myself. But I just, I feel down for some reason it's it's only because you're still shedding that skin okay there's still some residual energy of who you used to be that's there okay and so just allowing yourself to be guided by your spiritual team and knowing that you're being guided down this path for a divine purpose is where you want to shift your focus in at. And to know that on the other side of this, you're doing something great, not only for yourself and for your offspring, but for humanity as a whole, okay? So, yeah, you have the rebel. You're breaking chains. You see what I'm saying? This is that energy of the generational curse breaker. That's what I think every time I see this card. And so the rebel is the one who was once chained down, chained down to inauthentic structures or chained down to people that just wanted to drain drain you of your energy okay or chained down to certain belief systems or certain patterns certain habits certain certain addictions certain codependencies certain ways of thinking but the rebel is the one that breaks those chains and in order to break those chains first of all you have to gather up a certain amount of strength in order to break yourself free from a chain like this okay and so you had to really take a good look at some of those areas where you were not feeling so strong, where you didn't feel so powerful and you had to take your power back in those areas of your life. You had to gain that passion and that spark and that fire. You had to, you know, uh, awaken that fire that is within you that said, okay, no more of this. I'm setting myself free. I'm not going to allow myself to be stuck and chained and bound to this energy anymore. And so, in that energy of breaking free. Imagine if you was chained. We're talking about, obviously, in this lifetime, from childhood into adulthood. But if you want to take it even further back, you can talk about the generations. Because I just mentioned the generational curse breaker. You can look at the generations that you were chained and bound. Or that your ancestors were chained and bound to certain belief systems certain patterns, certain habits, okay, um, certain ways of thinking. And then here you are being called and guided, divinely guided to take on the assignment to be the one who's going to break yourself, your ancestors, as well as your offspring from these generational curses. That is a very powerful assignment, and it is one that is not to be taken lightly. And it is one that is not an easy assignment because you got to first break yourself free from within before you can do anything for anybody else. Your ancestors, your offspring, you can't break the generational curses off of nobody else until you break them off of yourself first. And so that takes going deep. That takes going and, and really, really diving deep into those things that you suppressed, that you held back, that you tucked to the side, that you brushed up underneath the rug, that you was able to numb out or ignore, or that, you know, chaotic events in your life was so distracting that you just completely, you know, you blamed it on all of the chaos that was happening and didn't realize that it was deeply rooted. This wound was deeply embedded and you had tucked it away. And so now... You know, as the generational curse breaker, it's an assignment that is not for just everybody, okay? You have to be a very special being 
to have that assignment, but just know that you was given the assignment because you possess already the strength to release yourself, okay? It was just uh, your upbringing and, and different things that you went through made you believe that you didn't have that strength for a time. And, you you know, being, if when you're chained, then that's intentional, okay? When you're chained down to something, that's intentional, whether it be coming from the source of a spiritual, a lower-level entity, or those karmic family members, or karmic gov uh, government uh, structures, karmic religious structures, whatever the case may be, they could all play a, a, a major factor, which they most of the time they do. When they're trying to keep the generational curse breaker chained down, what you end up going through is a lot of trauma when you're chained down and you can't move. You can't do anything about it, or at least that's what you perceive. They've created the illusion for you that you can't do anything about this um, this, this um, captivity that you've been placed under, spiritually, mentally, physically. And so in that energy, you you end up experiencing a lot of traumatic events in your life. And so this is where, in this moment of breaking yourself free, when you do this, you know, many of you have already done this part, um, had this part of your experience, or you might be being called to do this right now. In that moment, all you're thinking about is gathering up the strength to release yourself. And so that's that adrenaline that's that energy that comes in that says I'm, I'm breaking myself free i'm not going to stay here anymore so that fire and that passion that anger or you know that courage all of that energy comes in and it allows you to set yourself free okay so now you're free now the chain is broken but it's not until after the chain is broken that you get further down your path and you begin to realize after that adrenaline rush is, is gone and you begin to slow down you begin to take a good look at yourself and what you have been through and how it has taken a toll on you physically, spiritually, mentally, then it's like, wow, it's time for me to slow down so I can go. I need to take myself somewhere so I can heal, you know? And so it's like that, um, you know, you get to that high, that high energy that allows you to, break yourself free and then after you come down off of that high you got to face the reality of the damage that was done in that time of captivity okay and we're not just like i said we're not just talking about the captivity of what took place in this lifetime but we're talking about the captivity that you have taken on from your ancestors of many previous lifetimes that was never released that was never addressed because they did not have the assignment to be the generational curse breaker or they did not accept the assignment of being the generational curse breaker. And so when you have all of this to shoulder, then you can end up in that space where it's like, why am I feeling like this? Where is this coming from? But literally it's because you just still got to work on releasing. You still got to work on getting to the root of where it's coming from, getting to the root of the pain acknowledging it and releasing it from your life. So y'all know I like to do the exercise of um, writing things down when they come up and, you know, acknowledging them and then burning them to release them. And then, you know, speaking to the most high God, you know, thanking him for being able to reveal to you these things and for strengthening you and empowering you to be able to push through these things. And then, you know, speaking life into yourself again, feeling that void space with what you, um, you know, with things that's going to be healing. I am love. I'm worthy of love. I'm powerful. I'm strong. I'm free. I'm free. You know, because a lot of times people don't realize you possess the authority to create your own freedom for yourself. But a lot of times your captivity is within your mind. It's something that you have within you because you have not been able to see where the wound was and so the chain still remains in certain areas of your life and so it can be heavy for the generational curse breaker i can relate to that and i understand what y'all might be going through but you're still being divinely guided to continue to do the work to become the greatest version of yourselves and to know that you have everything that you need from within you you have all of the power. You have an entire beautiful spiritual team that's always around and readily available. Whenever you need the help, you just call out and ask. 
speak to the Most High God and give him thanks and gratitude for blessing you with such a beautiful team. Because one thing about being a generational curse breaker is generally you're the black sheep of the family. Generally, you're the one that's, you know, set aside and preserved. You know, you're the one that's treated differently. And then when you come into this realization of who you are and what your purpose is, then you you end up having to let go of a lot of people because you, you recognize, you, you try them by their spirit. You see them for who they are versus who they, versus the illusion that they presented to you based on the blood relation or the amount of time that you've been with them or the karmic love that they brought into your life okay and so i i can definitely um relate and i see what you're going through you have harmony in reverse so that's showing me that yes you do feel off balanced okay and so that's where you're needing to balance those things that you're thinking about with those things that you are feeling um but you want to make sure that if those things that you are thinking about are not in alignment with peace and happiness and love and self-love and gratitude, then first you got to shift the thoughts. Because what you don't want to do is pair negative thoughts with negative feelings. Because when you do that, you create something. And because you are the generational curse breaker, you possess very powerful, you know, the powerful gift of being a creator. And so you can literally create that type of energy for yourself, you know, if you... Um, if you allow it to fester, if you allow yourself to be too submerged in that negative thinking and negative emotions, okay? I'm not saying that you should not feel. Yes, you have to acknowledge your emotions, acknowledge that letting go is not the easiest thing to do. And being the generational curse breaker is a an assignment that is not for, you know, the, the weak at heart. And you, you allow yourself to express those emotions. You might even cry for your own ancestors and for what they've been through. You might cry for the fact that, you know... You had to release some of these people who chose not to take the calling. You might cry for them and knowing that it's going to take maybe even lifetimes for them to come up out of this, uh, to come up out of this matrix and to come up out of the illusion, you know, and, and the toxic energy. That's okay. Your feelings are justified and they are valid. But what you don't want to do is allow it to become the dominant energy as you're going through this transformative phase, Okay. Do what's necessary to transmute and alchemize that energy by speaking life into yourself, taking in uh, healthy things into your body, okay? Um, going out into nature as often as possible. Don't allow yourself to get so caught into that energy that keeps you down to where you, you don't even allow yourself to go out and be back connected with nature again because nature is healing. It's not just something to do. It's not just a trend where people think, oh, well, if, if you're woke, then technically you're out in the grass meditating. No, you're doing it because you understand the healing aspect of nature and because you understand that nature is not just healing to you, but you are also in turn healing to nature because the more you heal, the more you're able to emanate an energy that is balancing to all things that exist around you, okay? And so... Continue down your path, all right? Um, in spite of how you're feeling right now, go within, okay? The source, everything that you need is within your DNA, okay? Everything that you need is within your Akashic Records. Everything that you need is already within you, okay? Because the Most High structured it that way so that anytime you feel like you're not enough or like you don't possess what's uh, necessary to keep you going down your divine path, just go within, and grab hold of that strength and that personal power and that wisdom that you possess, you know. Um, it's there and readily available to you. All you got to do is, you know, seek and you'll find it. So let me just pull a couple of cards here. Um, some of you may be dealing in an energy of poverty and lack mentality, okay. Lack mentality doesn't necessarily have to deal with your financial circumstances. But for some of you, it could be that you're waiting for your harvest to come in. You know, you might have been making some sacrifices, you know, in your life and you're waiting to reap the harvest of those seeds that you planted material wise, then some of you, you can be in lack mentality where you feel like there's not enough love to go around. There's not enough uh, balanced partnerships to go around. There's not enough uh, peace that you can have direct access to. There's not enough happiness or laughter you know some there's something that you feel is not readily and abundantly available to you whatever that is that would be an example of lack mentality 
you're being called to recognize that there is an abundance of everything infinitely abundantly available to you okay because that's just how the most high structured it and you just all you have to do is just get outside and look around one thing of one of the one of the negative aspects of humans being within you know uh enclosed spaces is that it limits it can it has the ability it doesn't have to but it has the ability to cut off your perception of uh infinite abundance and things being infinitely available to you when you're outside in nature more often than you are inside it's always that reminder to you that there is no lack. There is no shortage. You go and plant your feet in the grass and you can't even count how many blades is up, up underneath your one foot, okay? Um, and so, therefore, when you think about the whole entire planet, there's no shortage of anything. That's an illusion that the enemy created, okay, through um, using materialism and, uh, you know, the media and things of that nature to make us think that, it's not enough men to go around, you know, it's not enough women to go around, it's not enough uh, money, it's not enough food, you know, it's food shortages everywhere, and it's not enough, um, you know, happiness or freedom or peace, it's not enough of any of these things. It's only preserved and stored up for those who uh, have high status some kind of way. But please understand, I don't care what type of position, you know, because the enemy, their position is to have high status in the material realm for a time. You know, that's getting ready to be up too. They was given, uh, the enemy was given dominion over the uh, material realm for a time. But that's only because we had not taken our power back in the spiritual realm. Everything begins in the spiritual realm first and then it manifests in the physical. And so if we didn't, the fact that we didn't have our power in the spiritual realm because we forgot who we were through traumatic events, we forgot who we were, then the enemy was given the authority, you know, he took advantage of the fact, okay, they don't know who they are, so they can't create this for themselves in the spiritual realm, so therefore, they definitely ain't create, create nothing in the material, so we just gonna go ahead and, you know, step in and, you know, impose our authority over everything and make them think that there's a shortage of all things. But when you recognize and you wake up to who you are, and you know that you possess the authority and the power in the power in the spiritual realm, the enemy ain't got nothing on you, okay? Because that type of authority is the type of authority that cannot be touched, that cannot be matched. And when we when we begin to wake up as a collective body, when we wake up as a collective body, then everything changes, okay? Everything shifts, including the power that the enemy possessed in the material realm. And so then all of those things that was withheld from you, your your inheritance, your birthright, your freedom, your material wealth and abundance, all of those things that was withheld from you in the physical realm, it gets back restored to you because you've taken back your power in the spiritual realm. And so poverty and lack mentality there. You have here low self-esteem low self-esteem okay and so solar plexus that's dealing with your confidence and your courage that's dealing with that energy of taking back authority over your life maybe right now you're feeling like because you lack certain things in the physical realm that somehow you don't have any power you know you might be so focused in on getting the harvest that it's weakening you to think about the amount of time that it's taking you know and um it's that's just that old version of yourself that wants to creep back in. But it, it, you make no room for that because you make sure that you do what is necessary to shift the energy. Go back into saying your affirmations and focusing in on the vision so that you do not allow this type of energy to drag you backwards. Because it's not going to take you way back. You know, you come too far. But what it can do is postpone your forward movement. Now, what I'm seeing here at the bottom of the deck deals with sexual trauma. Okay, shame. Uh, due to sexual trauma not everybody has dealt with sexual trauma but sexual trauma plays a large role in causing issues with your creative ability whether it's your ability to create a physical child or your ability to bring forth your creative gifts and those things that you are talented in doing and so a lot of times 
You'll find yourself working your jobs that you're not happy with because you feel like you don't possess any creative gifts. You're like, I don't have any gifts, you know. So then you end up feeling as if you are, you have to stay stuck in this position because you don't possess what's necessary in order to create for yourself or to start your own business or whatever the case may be. But this is only because if you dealt with sexual trauma and if that's something that you haven't fully brought to the surface so that you can allow yourself to acknowledge it and to heal from it, then it still will have its way of creeping back in, okay? Um, there's a lot of other spiritual energy that's behind the you know, sexual molestation that a lot of people go through. Many people go through sex mol uh, sexual molestation. They'll put certain statistics out there in terms of, well, this group of this percentage of people generally go through it. That's only those who report it. Most people that deal with sexual trauma, in my personal opinion, they do not report sexual trauma. Okay, It goes unspoken about it. They might speak to a family member about it, and a lot of times family members will ignore it they'll brush it underneath the rug because a lot of times it's another family member that they might be close to who has done that you know who was the perpetrator who was the pervert in the family and so they don't want to see that person go to jail or you know whatever the case may be um and so it goes unreported and so they don't even have half of the numbers of those people who have actually dealt in sexual trauma both male and female and when it's a male that deals with this it's even more underreported because there's a lot of shame and guilt that comes behind that and it does something to the man you know to the male's uh manhood and feeling like he did not he should have been more strong or he should have been more uh taking back his authority in that moment but and it, it brings about an energy of guilt and self-loathing especially for the men but it's also very traumatic for the women okay it's no less it's no more or less traumatic for either group but i'm saying that this is how it generally affects people and so when your sacral chakra is blocked then you might find yourself not being able to awaken your creative gifts and so then you end up you know feeling like you have to be stuck and tied down to a nine to five that you may hate and it's not bringing you the type of abundance that you desire to have but this is all part of breaking those generational curses because a lot of times, if you dealt in sexual trauma, you wasn't the first one in your family that dealt with it. This was generations that dealt in this, okay? Or that was um, a victim to this. And so, a large part of your position as a generational curse breaker is to make sure that it ends with you by doing the work to heal and then to take your power back to speak using your authority, you know, in the spiritual realm. I establish that righteous judgment and justice and balance will be brought on behalf of myself and my ancestors, that, you know, all sexual trauma is now destroyed, okay, um, and that healing is now able to take place for myself and my ancestors that preceded me. You know, these are the types of things that you do in order to actually break the generational curses. You speak out and you establish that authority in the spiritual realm because you have the you have permission to do so. You've been given the authority to do so. But you can only do this after you gain your confidence and your personal power. If you're in that energy of feeling low about yourself or dealing in low self-esteem or very overly focused in on those material things that you have around you or that you might have or that you might lack, then you're not feeling empowered in that energy. And so you can't break a curse. You can't, you know, you know, you can't speak with authority in the spiritual realm unless you know that you possess the authority to shift these things for yourself. And so this is where the healing continues to happen for you. And you continue to do what's necessary before you can say officially you are in the new season of your life. And now it's time for you to whatever, whatever that looks like for you. You know, it doesn't mean that you're going to step into that new season 100% healed because you might find that there's other things that might come up that you have to acknowledge. You know, as the chosen seed, as generational curse breakers, we always going through death and rebirths. I just went through one about a week ago, okay? And so it happens. And in that moment, you have to, you know, just show gratitude. You know, be grateful that these things are coming up because you suppress them for so long, building this wall around yourself in order to protect you from having to deal with these types of circumstances that it just became, you know, that dormant energy 
But what is emotions? When you start to feel emotional and you feel off balance and you don't know where it's coming from, emotions is energy in motion. So that means that there's something that you're doing right because you're starting to get that energy that you suppress within you. You're starting to get it to move. And the more it moves, eventually it comes out. But you have to give it permission to do so by saying, all right, I'm seeking out. Where is this coming from? What is the, the root of this? Let me acknowledge it. Let me acknowledge my feelings. Let me acknowledge what happened to me. And let me go ahead and do what's necessary to release it. And then now I'm going to replace that void with all things that I desire to be and become. And all those things that I know that I have the potential to be. And so you just have to be very conscious about what you're doing, okay? Very intentional about what you do. You have um, another sacral chakra card. So if you felt like you might have dealt with any reproductive issues, impotence, or infertility, that's not the case for everyone. But if your sacral chakra is blocked, then a lot of times it is due to... Uh, it, it will have a direct impact on your, you know, fertility and not just, like I said, not just your ability to create a child, but your ability to create your naturally God-given gifts, okay? Um, so let's see what else. You have here workaholic. Some of you might be overworking, okay? Submerging yourself into your work. Because if you're dealing with poverty or lack mentality, not necessarily poverty, but if you're dealing with lack mentality, if you feel like you just don't possess enough, like you just need more, and if you have more, then somehow it'll help you to balance out that energy. Somehow you'll feel more satisfied. Or you could be a workaholic because you just want to avoid having to deal with certain things in life. Then you're being called to slow down because once you give yourself the opportunity to sit still long enough to hear then you'll be able to do the work to address those wounds and heal. A person that's in a process of healing themselves, like I said, when you break in them chains and you finally release yourself and set yourself free, by the time you get further down that path, because you done did all that work to break yourself free, you've done that, so now you had to keep running, keep running, because you got all of that adrenaline in you that's saying, okay, go until you get out of this energy, then you finally get there. What happens is that adrenaline rush comes down, and it's time to start facing those wounds. It's time to face the fact that, hey, I do feel weak. You know, I do feel um, bruised. I do feel some pain right here. You know, it's okay. And so in that moment, you have to give yourself time to nest. Go, go find a place, you know, and, and, and nurture yourself. Nurture yourself back to health because you are the, you are the healer and the practitioner to yourself first before anybody else. And as a generational curse breaker, like I said, you have to first be able to heal yourself before you can heal your ancestors and before you can heal those offspring that come that proceed from you or even uh, humanity, whatever your calling is. So let me just look at these and then I'm going to close out. So you have here lack of personal power, lack of strength. So that's what I was just speaking on that lack of personal power, lack of strength. Um, and that's only because you broke that chain and now you just got to go ahead and slow down. So you can nurture those wounds. Slowing down doesn't mean that you lack your power or your strength. It just means that you are embracing the power that you have and you're preserving it for when it's time for you to step back out there. So right now it's like, okay, I'm okay with a little bit of stagnation. I'm okay with things moving slowly because I need this time to rest and rejuvenate. I need this time to acknowledge my wounds. I need this time to heal. You don't need to be running around at work all day, you know, doing these crazy shifts and, you know, pushing yourself because that's just going to further, that's going to further cause injury to the wounds. Allow yourself the time that's necessary. If you have, if you're in a position where you stored up two weeks of vacation time, but you know you don't plan on taking no vacation nowhere, but it would be good if you did. But if you don't, then use that time to just nest, nest and heal. You have here, spend time with children, random, random acts of kindness. This is dealing with your heart chakra. So doing things from a space of love is actually going to also be very healing to you, okay? Because love is a wonderful salve when it comes to wounds. So spending time with your children, being more playful in your nature, random acts of kindness for people just, you know, just off, the, just off, off, off your heart, you know, not for accolades, but just because that's just what you have been called to do that's really going to help you in your healing process and then you have anxiety when communicating throat chakra so if you found that you know especially if you dealt with certain traumas like what was mentioned here uh, sexual trauma or any type of trauma verbal abuse physical abuse whatever the case may be 
It has a way of blocking out your throat chakra and your ability to communicate your truth or, you know, feeling like you are noticed or feeling as if you are being heard, okay? And so you might have some anxiety when communicating because um, uh, I've noticed that if you have a lot of secrets or things that you've suppressed, those are generally the people that have the hardest time with communicating because it's those things that need to be communicated that are stuck. They're trapped because you've, 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 you've uh, submerged them there. You've suppressed them there. And so when it comes to communicating anything outside of that, it becomes a whole lot less relevant because the things that need to be spoken about or communicated about are suppressed. Those things that need to be addressed are suppressed. And so you end up having a hard time with communicating just in, in general. So working on your throat chakra, your heart chakra, your root chakra, definitely your sacral chakra and your solar plexus, you, you're, you're being called to do work on all. You might as well just say all of your chakras because if I pulled a little bit longer, we probably would end up with all of the chakras here. If the root chakra is off balance, then so are the rest of your chakras. And so being in that energy of feeling down or depressed or sadness, a lot of times it will prevent you from going out into nature to do the work to heal, sun gazing, and doing all of those things that you probably normally would do for yourself. But because you feeling off balance, you end up doing activities that are off balance to your nature as well. Um, and so now you're being called to get into nursing yourself. Put on that, you know, that nursing cap. Put on that doctor's cape. Do what's necessary to heal yourself. Taking herbal remedies, you know, green smoothies, water, coconut water, whatever it is that you need to do for your physical vessel. Then peeling back another layer mentally, being very clear about the thoughts that you're having. And if you know that this toxic thoughts, then start doing what's necessary to purge and release, writing them down and burning them. If you got to set off the fire alarm every single day, do what's necessary. And then filling yourself back up with those positive affirmations and positive thoughts. You might want to place some positive affirmations in your sleep. And then um, going on a deeper level, on a soul level, making that divine connection with the Most High God. You know, making sure that you're always giving gratitude and thanks for the fact that you have even been given the assignment to do something so great. And that he would even find you worthy of being capable of doing so and possessing you with the strength and the power and the authority to break these generational curses. Make sure that you, may, that you maintain that relationship. So that's what I got for y'all. I love you. If you desire a private reading, please be sure to email me. Um, and also thank you for the likes and the subscribes and the beautiful comments and the donations that you all make to my channel. So I love you and I'll talk to you all next time.